Thank you all for coming to join me at this breakout session to build fast, build easy. Today we're gonna to learn about some of the developer capabilities in Appian and how low code makes you extremely effective at creating great experiences. My name is Rachel Rader. I am an Appian product manager. Been with Appian for about nine years and before that I worked for an Appian partner, uh, probably like some of you in the audience. So welcome all of you. We have a few more people trickling in. So come on, join us. All right, there's still seats. Okay, well, let's dive in. What are these? Well, you all know what a pile of masks looks like. You've been looking at this for a couple years now. Uh, but what are they doing in my presentation here? Uh, so when the global pandemic hit, everyone was working and living in really uncertain times with high risk, lots of change, and not really sure what's coming next. And enterprises everywhere had to respond. Uh, lives and livelihood were at stake if there wasn't a proper response. So everybody was really pressured to do the right thing. How did Appian respond? One of the things that we did was to make workforce safety. So this is an application that helped uh, many companies track contact, trans contact tracing and vaccine you know, status and uh, monitoring personnel as they came into their workplace to make sure that everybody was safe. We also use this in Appian, so it's something that helped us be safe through the pandemic. But the real point I want to make here is that it was really fast to roll out workforce safety and keep rolling out changes as the pandemic evolved because it was built with low code. Low code was really the perfect choice for rolling out this application. Because it was built on low code, as you all know, you've been learning a lot about Appian recently. And with Appian, you can discover, design, and automate your business processes all while floating on a really strong foundation of low-code data. Process mining helps you discover the process that you don't even know exists yet and find out where to be more efficient. Low-code application design tools and capabilities help you model the future of your application to create not just the workflows but the user experience that you really want your, your uh, business to have for all of your customers. And finally, complete automation lets you focus in on the tasks that humans could do, but it's not really a good use of their time, so what can we do uh, with little or no human intervention? Customers who use the low-code platform see amazing results. Here are some numbers from a recent Forrester study where they interviewed independently many Appian customers and came away with these results. So low code is faster and easier to build compared to custom code. 17 times faster, 50% lower costs. And looking at how a company experiences the benefits of a low code application over time, there's a lot of cost savings here. 13 million on average for a typical scenario. And this quote on the right is also an extremely common thing to see for customers who've adopted low code. What used to take us five weeks to make, we can now make with days in Appian. Weeks take days now. Something that used to take months can take weeks and years can take months. We hear this all over the place from everybody who has invested in Appian in their business. Here's a particular customer story that I really like. So Aon is a global professional services company that does consulting on risk and retirement and healthcare services for clients all over the world. And Aon called on Appian to automate their uh, claims process. Mission critical, really important part of their business. Uh, and this application was delivered in eight weeks, their first one. This is really impressive for not just you know, some side project application, but something that is really critical to their business. Now today, 30 users at, at Aon use this application internally to, man to manage their process, but they also use it to communicate with all their clients externally too. It's pretty impressive. You too can deliver these results for your company or your client uh, by adopting low code. So no matter where you're at, 
Some of you may be very new. This is your first time hearing about low code. Some of you are probably expert developers. No matter where you're at, there is more for you to learn on Appian Community. So I encourage you to go check out the custom learning paths that we've created for each role and take a look at how you can level up your low code skills. For all you developers and aspiring developers in the audience, become an Appian certified developer. This is great for staying up to date on the product and best practices, but also it's a great move for your career. So now let's dig into today's case study. We're going to be looking at an order fulfillment application. Here's what the end users see. Workers use this site to manage their order fulfillment tasks, see what their workload is, drill in, complete their tasks, and see several metrics about their performance. Next, we have a trends dashboard for managers to watch broad trends over, the, over time and how the workforce is doing and where they might need help. And finally, these orders are for customers, so of course we have a nice customer dashboard where you can drill in and look at a particular customer and see their orders, their opportunities, their contacts, and lots of different data to give you a full view of that customer. You're scrolling down, there's not just grids and text here, there's also a variety of uh, interface display components. So that's the application that we'll use as a foundation to walk through various low-code capabilities. Now, if you take a step back and put on your developer hat, what does this app look like inside Appian's development environment? So here is our new Explore page that is coming out in 22.2. This page is a high-level overview of the key parts of your application. It's a new page in addition to the ones you're already familiar with. The main pane, there's key objects. You can see at the top, here's the site we were just looking at. With the three pages, there's a live preview of each and links to drill into the objects that back those pages so you can quickly get where you want to go. Below that are record types. Of course, you have data in your application, and here are the most important record types, including ways to drill down and navigate to their views, their actions, and find those underlying objects that are a couple hops away. Next are process models. Again, the most important processes in your app, and the metadata here shows you which ones have human tasks versus bots, or AI operating within that process. Finally, below, we have connected systems and web APIs, which are also important ways to understand how an application behaves. On the right, you can see recent work in packages, groups, and security, and documentation where the team can upload design diagrams, requirements, best practices, whatever is necessary to keep your team working efficiently. This new feature in 22.2 is a great way for anybody, whether you're new to Appian or not, to ramp up on an unfamiliar application. Use it for your own learning, use it to train new people, use it to uh, transition an application to either a client or a customer, whoever's taking over for maintenance. This is a finished application. Let's take a step back and look at the journey to getting to that full application. So here is the new welcome page of Appian Designer. In addition to that new Explore page, we've reimagined the initial experience for diving in to build an application from scratch. And you'll see some familiar features, like across the top, there's a call to action to get started to build a new app or import a new one. Below, there's obviously a list of the applications in this environment, so you can jump into the right one. And on the right, there's a new panel to help you get connected with whatever you might need to continue your learning or keep you efficient during the day. There's many links to community here, so you can ask a question on a forum, check in on a support case, read the documentation, or below we're also advertising a rotating list of, of new content as it's released. So right now the promotion is the DevOps ebook, which is a great way to learn more about DevOps if you're curious. Let's say we've created a new application. This is what it looks like when all you've done is said, I want a new application, and now you're in the empty state. It's really the empty state of the Explore page that we were just looking at a couple minutes ago. Now you can see that there is a new guided experience to help a developer get started, build their first objects. There's three choices here. So starting with data, building a record type is gonna be by far the most common choice for most developers out there. The two other options, process modeling and building a site, are gonna be great ways to get other roles in your, uh, in your project team involved such as with process models, if you have a business analyst who 
uh, isn't going to be building the app themselves, but really knows the process inside and out, this is a great way to get them involved uh, to, to start getting what's in their head outside and into a process flow. With a site, if you have a UX designer who's really visually oriented and thinking about the information architecture and the user flows, starting with an interface is a good way to, uh, to bring them into the project and really you could work alongside them and, and talk about what the user experience is that they want to design. So I said data is very common. That's what we're, what we're gonna start with today and get into Appian's low-code data capabilities. So what low-code data is really all about is unifying multiple data sources across your enterprise, bringing them into one place, modeling complex security, and using that data as part of every interface that you build to create a great user experience. Using our new low-code data capabilities is 10 times faster and easier. I definitely encourage you to, uh, to get familiar with them if you haven't yet, um, and you're really gonna love it. So I said we'll start by making a record type make my new record, making an order record because we're talking about order fulfillment. Quickly fill out the name, take the default security, and dive into the record type designer. Now I'm gonna tell Appian about my data. I have an existing database that I wanna connect to. I'm gonna opt into sync because there's tons of great features that go along with that to make it easy to build your interfaces and have them be extremely performant. I'll choose that orders table that I, I know I wanna connect to. See a quick preview of the data to make sure that I've chosen the right thing. Next, you'll see a filters page to further filter the data. I'll skip that for now. Just confirm that these are the fields that I want. Submit, and you can see within seconds, we brought data into Appian and made it available to use on the rest of our application. Here again is another preview of the data so you know what test data you might wanna work with to build out things. So think about what we just did. Imagine doing it a few more times to make more record types and then relating them as you can see in the network diagram on this page. Once the data is in Appian, a lot of people tend to do the same things next. You build out sort of the basic interfaces and actions to, to view and act on that data. A lot of that functionality can now be built automatically in Appian. New in 22.2, there is an example. Of, so one thing that we'll do is build out the summary view with a few point and click options to get a whole interface. Here you can see I'm, gener I'm picking which related records I wanna include here, the order, the line items, and order history. I'll just choose those three, confirm that it's the summary view I want. Appian's going to make a new interface and put it in an existing folder for me to reuse what I might already have. And now I'll generate that interface. It works. We'll open it up in Interface Designer, and you can see all those fields that I just elected to include on in my interface are here. And for relationships that are, say, a one-to-many, like one order has many line items, those line items are gonna be placed in a grid because that's a common way to just display those. So this is an accelerator. It's a great way to get your interface wired up. And as you do more and more of this and continue to refine those interfaces to be exactly what you need for your application, you'll see that you can pull together data from anywhere. So here in this, this one interface that's pretty, pretty busy, uh, we're pulling together data from three different sources. There's obviously this is a customer record that we're looking at. So we're pulling the customer data from Salesforce. That's also where the opportunities are coming from. There's a list of those. The order that we just made is obviously coming from a database and you can see a list of those here too. And if you look at the other record views on this page alongside summary, one of them is called service requests. This data is coming from a web service. So now it looks seamless to the end user. They don't have to jump around to different systems and all this data is brought together in one place. Now let's take a closer look at interface design. So starting from this interface we were on before, I'm gonna drill down into the order summary view. Now, there's a few fields here at the bottom that I wanna move up to the top so they're more prominent. So right here from the end user interface, I can toggle in to inspect what's going on behind the scenes here and open up the right interface in Interface Designer to make edits. I see this middle column is the one I wanna work on. It's in a reusable rule, so I'll drill into that one. And right away, I can add a new column up at the top and drag those fields one by one to get them exactly where I want them. 
It's very easy to make changes this way. It's another place where you could imagine having your UX designer beside you to make sure that you're making the exact changes that they want. So once all of my fields are in the right place, I'll delete that extra section where they came from because I don't need it anymore. And I'll save this interface, and then let's take a look at what happened. So jumping back to the record view, after I save the interface, I'll reload that page with just a click, and then you'll see that after the summary page reloads that those three fields are now moved up to the top. So this is a very quick change to make in response to some UI feedback uh, to just move those fields without even writing a line of code. We've talked about data, we've talked about interfaces, so can anybody guess what the other pillar of app design is? Process, workflow, yeah, that's definitely it. So low code workflow, how do we work that into our application? Well, at a high level, low code workflow is an easy way to bring together and orchestrate humans, bots, and AI, uh, all in the same process in your application. And here you can see an example of what that looks like modeled so that the, the tasks for each actor are sort of in their own stripe or swim lane here. So let's take a look at some real process models. Once again, coming from our Explore page, I'm going to open one of the process models in the application. Now this one's pretty simple, simpler than the graphic that I just showed, but it has, it has a few nodes in there, and let's say that I want to send an email after performing one of these tasks. I can quickly search for that node, drag it into the process, configure it, and good to go. So here's an example of a much more complicated process model uh, that has many more swim lanes, many more nodes. There's really a lot going on in this one. And you don't have to read every detail here, but the point is that our uh, process modeling capabilities are easy to make easy workflows, but they're also powerful enough to handle whatever is the most complicated process at your business. All right, so now flipping from developer tools to uh, how to make the end user experience really great. One thing that you don't have to sacrifice when you choose low code is style. There's a lot of configurations in Appian to help you reflect your brand identity. Here you can see three versions of the same header where we're changing color and font and background to really craft the right experience that you want to show to your users that's seamless with the rest of your, uh, with your business. Next up, you'll notice we didn't do any special development to make this a mobile application. When you design an app on Appian, it works everywhere. Mobile, I, uh, mobile, web, iOS, Android, you don't have to make special considerations for those. However, if you do want to further tailor the experience for a particular form factor, there are additional controls to allow you to do that. So really it's the best of both worlds. The default behavior is very easy and is gonna work on all those devices, but if you do want to make more changes, that option is available to you. Speaking of reaching all users on whatever their device is, here at Appian, we take inclusive design very seriously. With our low-code platform, you can design apps that all users can use. We do very thorough testing to make sure that our product and our end-user interfaces are compatible with assistive technology so that users with low motor skills or low or no vision can still use those applications. This means that whenever we make a new interface component that you can put on an end-user screen, it's accessible out of the box. It has the right semantics, it has the right color contrast. And also, if you need to make, again, like with mobile, if you need to make further refinements to add more business context to your application, since we can't predict exactly what app you're gonna build, there are additional controls for you to do that. So once again, the default behavior is robust, you can rely on it, and there's extra flexibility if you need it. Further down the list of fine tuning, uh, the Appian app market is a great place to go looking for ways to extend your application. Perhaps there's a particular connected system or a UI component or just some plugin that isn't in the base product, but maybe you go looking here and somebody's already built one. So you can pull that into your application and take advantage of the Appian ecosystem to build more of your application. For all you developers out there, uh, if you didn't find what you're looking for and created it yourself, consider adding it back to the app market so that others can benefit uh, from your contribution to the ecosystem. 
So we covered a lot about what do developers do, what do developers not have to do, because it's free out of the box. Uh, and as we wrap up here today, here's a few things that I want you to remember. First is low code is powerful. You saw how we brought together data, data from several systems into one seamless user interface. Low code is really fast. We made changes to rearrange an interface, draw in additional parts of the process model, uh, and really adapt to the changing requirements and refinements as they came in. And finally, low code is better than ever in 22.2, which is coming out soon. So this new explore page that I showed uh, is really going to help you onboard everybody onto new applications, including yourself sometimes. So you'll want to take advantage of it when you have it. So what's next? Check out the Appian blog to see a always updated list of new topics in low code to help you stay up to date. If you haven't done it by now, do join Appian community. That's really the best way to get involved and, and level up your low code career. And again, for you developers, go look at that certification curriculum. It's really the right place to go next. And finally, 22.2 is coming. There will be a release webinar announced soon. So make sure to sign up for it so that you can hear about all the great things, in addition to what I've talked about here. And if there's more you want to say, reach out to me. That's totally fine. Uh, I'm always ready to talk about anything I talked about today or any other product discussion that you want to have. So don't hold back. I can't wait to talk to you. So thank you, that brings us to the end of this presentation. I'm really glad that you joined me today to learn about delivering low-code applications.